Welcome to St. Peter and All Saints Episcopal Church in Kansas City. We are happy that you are joining us this morning for holy worship. And we are happy that you're a member of our online congregation. We have in-person services at 8 and 10 o'clock, and we would invite you to join us for Holy Eucharist. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat for thus says the Lord. They shall eat and have some left. He set it before them. They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 145, verses 10 through 19. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. The epistle today is from Ephesians. I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being 
with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we all can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test Philip, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so the people sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, Jesus told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, And from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that Jesus had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, grant us your perfect love, so that all fear may be driven off, and each of us may become a fountain of living water. Amen. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a joy to share with you. I wonder if you know what is the most common counsel shared with us in the Holy Scriptures, in both the Old and the New Testament. It's some version of this message. Be not afraid. Don't be anxious. Why do you fear? And so forth. 
Inspired by the Holy Spirit, I think that the biblical writers understood what we're like as human beings. That too often we're consumed by fear. Now, to be sure, there are many things that can cause concern. War and famine and crime, illness, the state of our relationships, professional ups and downs, our children. All of that is normal. But to be consumed by fear... To have it paralyze us, that makes fear toxic and life-destroying. That is what I think the good Episcopalian Franklin Delano Roosevelt was talking about when he said we should beware of fear itself. Star Wars teaches us that fear leads to the dark side. And here, popular culture reflects ancient wisdom. In the late 300s, the desert monastics, tired of the new prosperity of the church under Constantine, went out to the desert to dwell with God. And there they pondered John 4 and Romans 5, which talk about God planting a living spring of fresh water, the water of love, in each of us who are made in the image of a God who is love. And they said that fear is like a big millstone which gets thrown over the top of that wonderful well. And then the trapped water becomes stagnant. It becomes useless and even distasteful. And so they counseled that we must labor with God in prayer to remove that millstone. They knew that as the first epistle of John teaches, it is God's gift of perfect love that drives out all fear. In today's gospel, we confront two types of fear. The first is the fear of scarcity. I've seen this particularly afflict our church as we ponder our call to mission. We know that we are being summoned to share the good news of God's great love with all people. There are still so many who don't know that God loves them. We're called to practice racial reconciliation, and we're called to care for God's beautiful and threatened creation. But we wonder, do we have enough time and money? Do we have adequate facilities? Do we have the right talent and leadership? And these doubts constantly hold us back. Our God would never ask us to do the impossible, to take on a task without having adequate resources. God is not arbitrary. If we are called to do God's work, we can be sure that adequate and sufficient resources are at hand. And so we just need to generously share, to give what we have. This is what Jesus and the disciples did that day in sharing the loaves and the fishes. And their generosity inspired others. And soon there was abundance, more than enough, food to spare. As I've traveled in Asia and Africa and Latin America, I've seen this miracle repeated often. The poor seem to have nothing, but in love they share what they have. And somehow everyone is blessed. All celebrate community as one. All partake of the meal. In this land of plenty, just imagine all the good that could happen if we generously, unreservedly share what we have received from God with one another. Second in today's passage, we ponder the fear of abandonment when life's storms come. This can prevent us from recognizing our Lord Jesus even when he is right there beside our boat. No matter what we face, Jesus is always right alongside us, whether we're aware of it or not. And because he is at our side, we can endure everything, no matter how bad, and nothing can defeat us. I'll never forget how my Lord was so very palpably present to me the morning that our first daughter, Carmen, was stillborn. At that terrible moment, God's strength just poured into me. God's arms embraced me. 
and I found the strength to go on to learn even from this very, very sad experience. When new storms arise, and they always will, it is helpful to look back and to see how Christ's presence has blessed us before. One of my favorite hymns is the classic, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Alas, in our hymnal we have a new translation of this hymn, which kind of really drastically changes the meaning of the second verse. I love the original. Here's how it goes. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come. Now what is an Ebenezer? It, the word means stone of help, and we find this in, in 1 Samuel chapter 7. The Philistines attack Israel, and Israel wins a resounding victory that kept the Philistines off their back for some time to come. And the prophet Samuel has the people erect a stone as a memorial so that they, when they look at that stone, they will realize, as he says, thus far the Lord has helped us. We need to have those markers in our mind of times when God clearly blessed us, God was clearly with us to get us through a difficult situation. If God has been with us thus far, we can be sure that God is going to be with us all the way. God is going to bring us all the way home. You know, when I was a child, we sometimes memorized passages of Scripture. I think that was a very good practice. It inscribed on my subconscious, almost, some key phrases from Scripture. And we have one of those beautiful ones today in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. You, you will find this verse at the conclusion of both morning and evening prayer in our daily office in the Book of Common Prayer. If you haven't already memorized this one, let me suggest strongly that you do so. Here's how it goes in our translation in the, in the, in the Book of Common Prayer. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. This is so true. We discover this daily at Bishop Kemper School for Ministry. We began with very limited resources. Most seminaries think that you can't possibly do what we have done with such a, a small budget and so little resources. But we have found again and again that as four dioceses share, amazing things can happen. Wonderful learning and community formation goes on and lay and ordained persons are empowered to do the work that God has called them to do. Jesus is calling us to share his mission. Casting aside all fear, let us respond boldly. Let us say, Master, speak. Your servants are listening. Here we are. Send us. For with you all things are possible. Amen and amen.
Let us say what we believe in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Martin, our bishop, and our clergy, Father Jonathan and Deacon Donna, our vestry, our day school, our parish staff, and especially St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Clinton, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Joe, our president, our elected representatives, and the courts, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially those affected by and those fighting the devastating wildfires in the Western United States, those recovering from the catastrophic flooding in Western Europe, those affected by the coronavirus, and also Ted and Marcia Camburn and family, Dan Nave, Catherine Allberg, Anna, the Reverend Barbara Beam, Will Kahn, Craig Cartwright, Kathleen Clark, Harold Czar, Tom Devine, Alan and Christy Aiken and family, Max Geck, Alex and Susan Green, Dorothy Gregory, Jennifer Brown Harnick, Betty Lockhart Hayes, Jim, Ed and Blair Joyner Jr., Charles and Karen Joyner, Michael Kelly, Glenn and Ruby Lane, John Loss, Jeannie McDowell, Memphis and Ez and family, Kathy Morris, Deacon Bob Murphy, Bob Knoll, Gary Oda, Rosemary Overby, Pam, Rob, Tom Carley and Theo Roberton, Rick Sisko, Dick and Lana Strong, John Thompson, Mary Warning, Carolyn Watson, Don and Donna White, the Reverend Stephen Wilson, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially John Cipolla and Jeannie Moore. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for our own needs and those of others. For those serving in the military, especially Loyal Otterson, Alex Battle, Tanner Bosch, Julie Bradley, Matthew Carmichael, Gage Dietz, Brendan Frederick, James Femmeler, Tom Gildea, Ryan Kelly, Aaron Lindy, Trey Mavers, Robert Mangold, Lucy Nix, Sean Perrone, Samantha Reed, Nolan Roberson III, Dan Sanford, Hunter Soule, Melanie Yates Nerber, and those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, Robert and Laurel Bondi, Shannon George, Tom and Kemp Weesey. Let us say together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.